When assisting with arterial line insertion, ask the provider which line they would like to place. For the radial artery, we have two options. We have the Cook Medical Kit, and we have an Arrow Kit. For the femoral arterial line, we have an Arrow Kit. Other supplies you will need are tape, towel, sterile towels, chloroprep, gloves, sutures, this is 3O silk, a dressing, and an armboard. Just as an FYI, a typical setup for the radial artery is to place a rolled towel under the wrist and tape the hand down for ease of access to the radial artery. While the provider is placing the line, use this time to set up your transducer. This includes a bag of saline, unless otherwise ordered, a pressure bag, Transpac IV monitoring kit with safe set reservoir, which can also be viewed through the packaging, transducer cable, which is red, transducer holder, and an IV pole. I've opened my tubing, my saline bag, and inserted in the pressure bag. I apply enough pressure to see green, and now I'm going to spike and prime my line. Insert the spike and do not remove it. While my bag is upside down, I'm going to turn my chamber upright going to activate my fast flush here and prime to the air fluid interface. I make sure all air is out. I can now close the stopcock to the air fluid interface and I will continue priming to the end of the line. I want to make sure all air is out of the line to make sure I get a good waveform. The reason we prime with the bag upside down is because air is going to travel up into the tubing. We keep the chamber upright so that a small amount of air does stay in the chamber here. You may have to squeeze the chamber to get some more fluid in it. To apply the transducer holder to the pole correctly, this here line called the zero line of the transducer holder should always be on top. Screw it to your IV pole, and when applying the transducer to the transducer holder, there's a couple different ways to remember correct placement. Up to the patient and tail down, or keep in mind the hard non-compliant tubing goes up and the soft compliant tubing goes down. And also note, when inserting it into the transducer holder, the air fluid interface here lines up perfectly with the zero line of the transducer holder. Finally, we want to change the white open system cap. This cap's only purpose is for easy priming and actually has a hole in it. So we're going to remove that and apply a yellow dead end cap so fluid can no longer get in or out of the air fluid interface. Keep in mind when setting up the arterial line that the system is considered a continuous infusion. Both the fluids and the tubing will need to be changed on Wednesdays and Saturdays. Now we can remove the white cap from the end of the tubing and hand it to the provider to hook to the patient arterial line. Insert the red transducer cable into the patient monitor here and into the jack of the transducer here. In order to level the transducer to your patient, the air fluid interface here at the zero line at the transducer holder should always be leveled with the phlebostatic axis. In order to locate the phlebostatic axis, Find the fourth intercostal space on the anterior chest, follow that laterally to the mid-axillary line. Where those two lines intersect is the phlebostatic axis. This correlates anatomically with the heart. With any position changes, you will need to raise or lower the transducer holder to maintain the air fluid interface with the phlebostatic axis. This applies to whether the patient is in a supine or semi fowler's position. With the red cable plugged into the second red port, you should see the arterial line appear on the monitor here. Next, we're going to zero the line. At the transducer, remove the yellow cap and turn the stopcock off to the patient, which is up. At the monitor, you're going to select the arterial line and hit the zero button. You'll know the line is zeroed when zeroed appears and the numbers go to zero. Back at the transducer, squeeze the fast flush to get air out of the air fluid interface. Apply a new sterile yellow cap and turn the stopcock back to the right.